What's up, guys? I'm about to go bike riding. But um, before I start my day, I wanted to speak to you all about a couple of things. Um, I remember when the Chris Brown and Rihanna thing was going on. Something that I noticed. I noticed that just about no person that I heard speak about that situation ever talked about the fact that both Chris and Rihanna uh, were children, barely out of their teens. If my memory serves me correct, I don't think either one of them were were 21 at the time. And if they were, um, they were barely 21. These were children. I remember the day that Chris Brown went on Good Morning America and was railroaded, you know, and in this particular situation, we're not talking about right or wrong. We're just talking about children and the mean things that grown ups said about both people. Um, People trying to take away, you know, how people feed their families without even knowing the whole story or in most cases not even caring about what was right or wrong they just care about the drama i'm watching the stuff that's going on with with Kyrie irving and i think it's deplorable i think it's terrible how grown black people are acting out towards a young man who is not pro or kind on the situation he just wants more information Kyrie is still in he's still in his 20s he doesn't have all of the answers and I'm watching these grown ass old black men talk about them white folks in a minute but we gotta clean up our own shit first I'm watching these grown black men treat this young man like he's doing something wrong for an imaginary ring for, I mean, these are black men that make millions of, you can go buy your own fucking ring. I hear people talking about championships, championships. I look at, you know, Michael Jordan and our greatest, you know, sports players. First of all, this shit is a fucking game, a child's game. And people are talking about it's about championship. It's about the team. You know, I saw something on Kevin Durant last night. Kevin Durant said, man, this man is trying to make a choice about his body. Like, I can't be mad at that. So everybody's talking about what the team members think when the team members don't give a fuck. Or if they do, they're respecting this, you know, what this man feels. So why do you have all of these commentators, but especially black commentators, going out of their way? To show how much they support a system. Let's define a sellout. Basically a person you can buy. To make them do whatever you want them to do. And I'm going to talk about money. Later on. I mean probably early next week. I was having a a discussion about quantum physics. Quantum physics with a friend of mine. And we were talking about how. White people have tricked black people into being so enthralled with money. And I read in several books that the universe doesn't know the difference between good and bad, only what you concentrate on. So if you say, I'm going to be a millionaire or I'm going to be a billionaire. okay, but at what cost? Who have you hurt? What have you sacrificed? And then the truth is American money doesn't hold much value it's not backed up by anything so you are willing to sell your people out you know sell your family out not spend time with your family for a system that was set up on money that doesn't exist or or it's not backed by anything tangible and i I, it's not my 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 business and what you invest in and what you believe in but I got into an argument with a young lady about cryptocurrency and I told her, I said, look at China. 
if you speak out against the government or do something against the government, since they are all digital, they can literally push a button and stop everything that you do. Your ability to feed your family, the, 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 the ability for you to spend your money. We keep running towards a system that does not give a fuck about us. You know, you look, I, I tell people all the time, what made Muhammad Ali the best boxer of all time? And the reason why other boxers can't understand that they'll never be him. It's not about the fighting. Of course, you have to be great. OK, that's a given. But it's not the fight that you take. It's the fight that you turn down. Muhammad Ali was willing to stand for what he believed in, his God, his religion. You know, during during his 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 peak time. And that's what made him the greatest of all time is not what he did do. And I told you all my dad said that. My dad said what makes you a man is not what you say yes to is what you say no to. So if you do anything for money, you are a fucking prostitute. You are a whore. And I applaud Kyrie. You got these same people who talk about the rights of people's bodies. And, you know, people should have the choice to choose what they do with their body. Then you turn around because this young man makes a choice about his body. Or is just telling people, allow me to have the time to, to make a decision. And this is what you do to a young man. Some of these niggas, I wish they would just shut the fuck up. And what they think is they think that they're upwardly mob mobile. So they think God is blessing them. You ain't doing shit for God. God ain't blessing you. White folks are blessing you because you're a fucking sellout. Because you're doing what they want you to do. And you think that you're doing the right thing for America or doing the right thing for God. You're not. You're doing the right thing for a system that gives a fuck about your people. And you don't give a fuck about them either. I see one commentator and I don't call people's names because that makes it personal and then people lose the message. But I see a commentator who discusses things, but when anybody else tries to talk, he cut them off. He doesn't let them even be heard. And this same commentator said when he stepped into the game, he did anything he needed to do to make his boss money. Operative word is boss. The same person I watch a white man hold down our community better than he does. And then, and then, from my understanding, just my understanding, I may be wrong about this. Then he gets thrown off of the show because he has other views. On my podcast, I always tell my people. Say what you have to say because you may be right. You know, it's so funny how every Black History Month we talk about leaders who made sacrifices. We always say in our community that we want to change. Well, in a change, what encompasses change is you doing something different. Not doing the same shit over and over again. And so you have black people who are trying to do something different. And you had the audacity to crucify them in public. What if you're wrong? What if you're leading people um, down a path that is not right? Why all of a sudden when white people let you die in the streets, all of a sudden they care about your health? I saw somebody say one time, shit, Johnson & Johnson can't get fucking baby powder right. They can't even fucking get baby powder right. What in the fuck? You know, just say that we scared. Just say that you don't know. Because to be honest with you, man, the sad thing about it is that some of you all have ran yourself into a corner that you won't be able to get out of. Some of you all have made decisions because you're scared and you're hurrying that you won't be able to take back. 
if what I know to be true is right and exact, and I don't say much until I can get the facts because I stand on the shit that I say. I'm willing to take responsi uh, responsibility for what I say. Most of these motherfuckers get up here and say the worst shit in the world and lead people in the wrong direction. And then once they find out they are wrong, they just move on to the next topic and, and do the man's bidding for that shit. You know, one thing I tell y'all about white folks is they don't just want you to do the job. They want your life. They want your soul. They want all of your motherfucking time. When white people were traveling around this earth, it wasn't good enough to just come and rape and have their way with the women and the culture and the food. They then had to burn it down. Most places that old white men go, they totally, totally annihilate the culture, annihilate the people. Look around. Where are the buffalo? Where are the Native Americans in traditional garb? Where are they? And if you look through history, they have used biological warfare before. Not even saying that this is the case. But you can't even take into consideration that something ain't right. And you know you feel it in your soul. I don't give a fuck what you say. You, something ain't right about this shit, man. And we keep running into the same corners. And we keep crucifying our children and our own. You can't tell me that y'all motherfuckers can't reach out to Kyrie and get in contact with him. I know you a fucking lie because I got in contact with him and I talked to him. So you telling me you got to get on TV, not understanding what this young man is going into. And as grown black men, you're going to get in and, and, and on TV and join in with this witch hunt. You weak as fuck. All y'all motherfuckers are weak as fuck. I try to always say it is my opinion. This is what I feel. I never forget, and I told y'all this story one time. There was somebody in news that I really wanted to put my hands on. I thought they were the worst thing for black people. And um, it, it bothered me so bad, I went and sat down with the minister. And the minister asked me, well, first of all, the minister said, David Banner, I understand how you feel. He said, but have you personally talked to this man? How do you know he knows any better? He said, you can't hold anybody. And I'm paraphrasing here. You can't hold anybody for uh, you can't hold anybody to something that you haven't taught them. You don't know if they know what you know. You don't know their experiences or what they went through. You know how hard it is to get money in America. If a person is standing for something, there must be a reason. We got to do better, man. And we keep thinking that people who are upwardly mobile in America, and I'm not saying if you're successful, you sold out. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is if it's easy for you and you're moving fluently, my mother used to always say, if you don't run into the devil four or five times a day, nine's out of ten, nine times out of ten, you're walking with him. And I don't believe in the devil, but you get the point. If stuff gets too easy for me, sometimes I look around just to make sure. Make sure you ain't no fucking sellout, man. My opinion. Who is Sundiata Okoli? Who is Asada Shakur? Who is Sekou Odinga? Who is Rochelle McGee and Jonathan Jackson? You will be able to ask, who is Matula Shakur? Who is Queen Mother Moore? And they will be able to tell you without skipping a beat. When niggas love revolution like they love the bulls, you will go on to ask them about Michael Jordan and they will say, who? When Incom builds up his city, I'ma be at the gate scanning you niggas and none of you niggas is allowed inside of the new Wakanda when it comes to these smear campaigns. We need black media. We need strong black media. This channel is dedicated to benefiting you by educating you through enhanced digital technology. For social, cultural, 
and political economical development by using social commentary on social issues or news stories. If you like this video, hit the like button. Don't forget to share and subscribe. The world will be different. Support and us by sharing, liking, and subscribing.